Beyonce recently broke the internet with her new single, Break My Soul. The song is giving us all those 90s house music feels. And of course, the sound is pr it's probably no surprise to Chicago's own Maurice Joshua. The iconic DJ remix tracks for Destiny's Child, as well as Beyonce, including a Grammy win for the remix of Crazy in Love. Maurice, it's always great to chat with you. Hey, Rudy. Hi. Good to see you again, man. First of all, when you heard Break My Soul, what were your first thoughts about when you heard that track? I was like, she should have did that 10 years ago when I was uh, real tight with them at the, at the time. And um, I, I, I put it out there to the management team, like uh, she should have been did a house record, you know, back back in the day. Uh, but they wasn't feeling because, you know, it was huge and everything. So I guess they were still trying to go the R&B route. So uh, but I am happy to see that she's doing that and is and it's causing a stir, which I'm I'm loving. Yeah, as far as remixes go, um, any plans to try to try to work with Beyonce on this new album? Do you submit remixes? Do they the artists ask you? How does that work out? Yeah, well, well now this new day and age is is totally different. Uh, it's a whole new crew that's at the label and her manager team because she's on a different level now. Um, I think um, I, I reached out, like I told you earlier, I reached out to her father and he was like, it, "I'm just playing the dad role now." So. Uh, I made some other uh, calls and uh, some emails out to some people. So I'm trying to see and find out who's in really in charge of that project to see if um, they need some remixes or some other production. So let's talk about you've dated uh, Destiny's Child, Say My Name, Jumpin' Jumpin', Lose My Breath. Let's talk, you know, let's talk Destiny's Child first. What was right. the, your first meeting with them? You know, first meeting Beyonce and when you introduced the, the remixes to her, you know, what were her initial thoughts? Well, my, my initial, well, when I first, the project was brought to me, it was brought to a, a gentleman named Dave German, who used to work at Sony in Columbia. Uh, he works uh, in the promotion department, of course, on the dance side. And he told me, he was like, Maurice, he's like, it's this new group that's out right now. And they're called Destiny's Child. And I thought that was a, right. If you never heard that name before, it sounded funny because like right now it's a household name. But yeah. back then I was like, that's a weird name, but okay. And he was like, they're going to be the biggest girl group ever. You should, you know, do something with them. Um, that was the first single, Bills, Bills, Bills. So I'm like, okay, cool. I like the song. I'm like, cool. Um, I get them at the original producer, Shakespeare. We talked. Um, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going I'm to redo everything. I'm going to put a whole live vibe to it. And it was several mixes. I did like a, a, a soulful mix and a big, at that time, it was a big room mix. So I did a big room mix too. Uh, went in there. And I was just like, you know what? Let me just put it out there. W will they be willing to recut vocals for me? Um, since it's a, a house tune we want to do, can they come in and do some different runs? I want, you know, and they was like, absolutely. They was like, they would do it. And it was great because they were new. So they was excited and was new to them. And um, it, it turned out to be great. Um, management loved it. The label loved it. And from that tune, I became the exclusive remixer for Destiny Child, Beyonce, Kelly, for almost every single that they released. I mean, because I remember, I mean, I'm definitely you know, remembering some of my favorite times of, of going clubbing is right. I had gone to Red Dog okay. and they played the remix of Say My Name. And that was just like, I was like, this, I don't know who did this mix, you know, because you couldn't <laughs> Google things on your phone at that point. You had right, like, exactly. So then the next morning went to Tower Records and I bought myself the CD single. I still have it. Oh, all right, Rudy. Right there, Maurice right there. And I was like, you know, like between Bills, 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 this one, lose. I mean, yeah. there were so many like, you, you you just got like, you got that nice, the nice groove. And like, you got to hear that in the new track. And it seems like yeah, she's kind of going back to like her roots. Right. It, it was totally different. And the reason why I love working with them, um, I, I didn't have, they was eagerly just open and, and they, they mindful to like, okay, I, I want to do this. They was listening. Uh, when I recut vocals with B and, and Kelly, everybody was just like, okay, yes, I get it. They do different runs. So that's why if you go back and listen to it, there's different runs and different ad libs that is not on the original record because those are all recut vocals. That, um, that. And um, management loved it, man. And, and, and they came to me and he was like, you know, we love doing this with you guys. As long as we're together, we're going to keep doing this. And then um, after a while, I think about three or four singles in, and that's when he uh, Matthew Knowles picked me up for management, too. So I was managing under uh, Matthew Knowles. Destiny's Child took a little bit of a break, and Beyonce went solo. Crazy in Love right. was the first big single for her. Uh, right. Talk a little bit about that excitement of, you know, creating that remix for her and ultimately winning the Grammy. Yeah, You know what? It was, to be honest, I didn't really like the record at first. When I heard that, I was like, oh, it's just a sample. I'm like, okay, it's a little different. 
uh, went into the lab and that mix actually didn't take me as, as long as I put into like, I did a mix, like say my name. Um, that's real live uh, string arrangements on there, uh, guitar, everything. So it was it was different. I, I, I approached that record totally different. Crazy Love was a little different because it was those record, one of those records where it's in between, you know, the 90 BPM ramp. So anything like 70 to like 90 ish is hard because you have to stretch the vocals. And then when you stretch the vocals, it become more chipmunk like. And at the time now it's different software out. Like it sounds much better now. But at that time, it was really like hard to, you know, get it to sound correctly. So I was like, it sound kind of strange me, you know, doing it, you know, speeding up. Can I recut vocals again? But at that time, B was on a, on a, on another level and higher up. So I couldn't have her recut those vocals. Uh, so I had to use the original vocals, which came out great. Um, I did it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like, okay, this was going to be one of those big records for me. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, it, it, it is what it is, you know? Um, but yeah, I got the call from management and uh, the whole team was like, uh, yeah, it's been nominated. Um, congratulations. And um, we've been nominated for one, two, also for the, for the regular version too. And uh, it was great, man. Uh, I can say that I believe it's a great honor because that award is everyone in the industry that has to vote for that. And that means something because um, everybody has to listen to it. And, you know, it's not like something where, oh, you just vote, you just vote. At that time, you had to listen to every mix, everything to be like, okay, what is it going against? Um, so everybody critiques everything, which, because I was part of the remix community that was out here in Chicago that, you know, brought all the remixes together. Big shout out to Steve Hurley for making that happen for making that uh, remix category happen in the Grammys too. Chicago legend too. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yes. So, so yeah, so that, that's, how, that's how the record came out. But we, we always had a great relationship. Um, she was eagerly, like, she was all business. Even though she was young, B was always business. Like, she, let's come in and work. Let's not play around. Let's go straight to work and get it done, which I, I, I really saw that and appreciated that. What are your hopes for this uh, for this new album? Because it's going to drop on uh, July 29th. What are you hoping as far as like the sound? I music am hoping some more house music is on there. And I'm really anticipating to listen. I, I was like, oh, I can't wait to hear what else is on there. Um, her breaking out with this and also Drake a week before this, um, as as a, he's doing some Afro house, which I'm like, it was a good try. But I'm just saying, it, but it, it brings light to the whole house community, which I think is great. I think now everybody's going to be into it uh, on a major label. And I think that's that's a great look for house music and great push for house music. Oh, exactly. And talk a little bit about, you know, you do some of these throwback events. You were just with CNC Music Factory and, and Hadaway and, and Two Unlimited. Yeah, so, uh, as, it, it, as far it, as like it, the 90s vibe and like house music when it comes on, because like whether you're at a barbecue at a, a block yeah. party, like when those songs come on, everybody stops what they're doing and you just have a good time. Absolutely. So I, I'm with a group called the Out Here Brothers, 90s group, um, had a huge record overseas uh, and they played the basketball games. It's the record. Boom, boom, boom. Let me hear you say way. Oh, so right. So uh, we, we we do a lot of 90s throwback uh, overseas and uh, we just got back from Ireland. Uh, it's 10,000 people crazy um, playing 90s music and it's young and old now, which is great because to see the crowd react to your songs and just stuff being like, it's amazing. And you get to see everybody back in the day um, that now everybody's older now, everybody relaxed, so everybody is chilling, we talking, uh, and we having a great time and, and, and having, you know, providing the energy for everybody back in the 90s. It's good to see decades later that people are really enjoying this music and they're coming out to these events because like you said, it's fun. It brings back memories. Uh, they child, you know, childhood growing. And then the young kids see this and it's, it's, it's no type of fights, no type of arguments, everybody loving each other and having a good time. Oh, exactly. And, you know, the one thing that I, that I do hope is that, you know, with new fans, you know, obviously her younger fans who weren't alive in my, you know, red dog partying days, right. you know, right. maybe you don't know those remixes, but, you know, are interested by the sound of, of break my soul and then go back and listen to your remixes that you did with destiny's child and some of the remixes that you did with, with Beyonce as well too, because if you're liking this, here's something else that you're really going to uh, enjoy absolutely. equally. Yeah. It, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was mind wrenching because even at the time when Matthew Knowles was managing all the girls and Beyonce and Kelly, 
um, he told me, he was like, listen, the dance market is hitting an, another genre overseas that we never got into that, that, that genre before. So it enters the light of like, okay, here we go. And they sell more records then. And that's what a lot of people don't understand because she didn't have to do any remixes, Beyonce, Destiny Child, anything. Mm -hmm. But they knew that, listen, for them to be huge, you have to catch a different audience. And dance music is huge. House music is huge. It's all over the world. I mean, it's anywhere you go is popular music overseas. It's the only, it's not really popular here in the States because you got hip hop, R&B. It's such a culture and so huge. But anywhere else you go in the world, house music is popular just as much as the rap and R&B music. Oh, exactly. That's what, that's what I'm looking for and looking forward to here since all these major, like, Beyonce. So the internet is, is breaking, like, a lot of memes and trends right now of Beyonce created house. I don't care. If, it, if, it, if that's the narrative, that's cool. Just, hey, listen to me. Just contact me on my website, mauricejoshua.com. I would gladly produce that or do a remix. So that's no problem. And Beyonce, contact me if you, you know, if you, uh, yeah, if you come on and call I'll me. I'll send you right to Maurice. I'll send you right, right to Come Maurice. back to the rules, y'all. Come, come back to the rules. We can do this for real now. And what, you know, one of the best parts of, of all these remixes is that it has a little piece of Chicago. So no matter where you go, you know, that Chicago sound is, you know, all around the world. Which is good because you know what? People get, give us credit about that. A lot of times we don't get credit of creating that and it is the birthplace of house music. And, um, I think that's 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 a good look for everyone. I, I don't. Some people say, "Oh, I don't like it." It doesn't matter. It still creates con the conversation. What we're doing right now, yeah. and putting house music back where it should be. And I think it's going to go forward because it's so much the rap stuff. It's cool. It's okay, but I think it's it's overbearing right now. Where now everybody needs something totally different now. Yeah. No, we're excited and hopefully, fingers crossed that you get to do a remix for this because then we'll we'll have another chat ourselves another chat. Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, you can get, hit me up anytime, Rudy. All right, you're the best. Thank you so much for your time today. All right, have a good one. You too.